Hey guys. Well, we are uh, in the month of June now. Can't believe it. It actually took a long time to get to June. You know, it would have been a lot faster if we were in school. So, hey, just to let you know, these uh these videos getting a little boring. So let me tell you exactly how to make them a little bit more exciting. To make them more exciting, I heard that uh, ice cream works, okay, chips works, uh, soda works, okay, so if you have a bag of chips with you while watching this, I think it will make it a lot more interesting and totally better than without it. Uh, I mind you, I'm recording these lessons, I'm eating myself. <laughs> I'm eating candy like this candy called Ema. I'm drinking this stuff called um, Milkus. Do you guys know what Emas are? Hey, if you do, you know, comment on the comment section. Okay. Anyway, let's take a look at. Uh, let's take up this question right here. Okay. Uh, hydrohalogenation. So, we know that for this reaction to occur, you have to have 25 degrees Celsius. Now, what you're doing is you're reacting an alkene to hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride. Now, what happened here is that hydrogen chloride will break apart. It will attack either one of these double bonds. So, because of that, what potential product are you going to get? All right, so let's say this guy decided to attack this double bond. If it does, obviously, okay, one participant will get the H and the other participant will get the Cl. Okay, so I would call this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven chloro, uh, four nonine. Okay. Now, does it always have to attack? Uh, does it always have to have H attack the second carbon? Can H attack the third carbon? Will that actually work? Yeah, it actually will. Okay, you can have this because you know for a fact that if this was the case, it has a different name. Okay, it's also a formonine, but the positioning of the chlorine is different. Now, is this the only product? No, there's more because why not we uh, attack this double bond? That can happen, right? So let's draw the nine carbon again. Okay, where this double bond, wait a minute, this, this double bond is being attacked, so let's erase one of the bonds. Okay, one of the H can be here and the other Cl can be here. Okay, that's different. If you are asked to name this, you will know for a fact that it will have a different name than the above two. Is that the only product? No, of course not. Um, this is another product. Okay, so in total, this reaction up here can have a potential of four different types of product. Now, here's the kicker though. Will they all exist in terms of the same amount? Now, we'll talk about that later on. But uh, hopefully for this question, you guys all got it. And let's move on to the fourth um, example for reaction of alkene. Oh, why did I do that? But that's okay. Number four, hydration. Okay. The word hydration, of course, means reaction 
with water. Okay, so let's let's draw water. Where water breaks apart to give you H and OH. Okay? So it's more like H plus and OH minus. Now we we've, we've seen that before. Water has that ability to do that, to split like that. So let's take a look at some example here. Okay. I have right here ethene. Okay. Reacting with water. Okay. Ethene reacting with water. Not a big deal. We all know that's you know that's something that will happen the question is what are the products now let me get to the mechanism here first before um, I proceed okay because this is something that can be quite important and that is the mechanism behind some of these reaction now once these two individual are closed together they will eventually react. By reacting, bonds are broken and bonds are made. That's the whole idea of reaction in the first place. So what are the re what are the bonds that are broken? Well, I can tell you right now, using different color, this bond is gonna break. Okay? One of these double bonds is gonna break. Now, the thing is this though. When this bond breaks, where do the electron go? Do both of these electrons decide to stay with the hydrogen? Or does it want to stay with the oxygen? Well, the answer is it will stay with the oxygen. Why? Because oxygen loves electron way more than hydrogen. I wonder what that was called. Man, October was a long time ago, wasn't it? electronegativity right oxygen is more electronegative so if these two guys were to have a divorce these electron will go to who likes electron more well oxygen loves electron more so therefore you'll have this OH that is negatively charged and an H that is positively charged okay all right, what's the fate of this guy? Now, the fate of this guy has two possibilities and it really doesn't matter which one. Because for this, um, it's a symmetrical molecule. Ethene is a symmetrical molecule. If you were to you know, put a line through this, the left side and the right side is really the same thing. So, let's say this electron for some reason decided to go with the left carbon what are you gonna do well if that's the case this is what you'll see the two electrons here decided to make its way to this carbon turning this carbon into a slightly negative carbon and this carbon being a slightly positive carbon well not slightly entirely entirely positive and entirely negative okay because both of these electrons decided to go this way okay the question is can these electrons go this way yeah absolutely absolutely in that case that this will be positive and this will be negative okay now I can see that the fact that you may know where things are gonna go right positive and negative do what that's right, they attract. So, that's the final step. This hydrogen say, well, I really like to get, you know, to be part of a molecule again. Where am I gonna attach myself to? Hey, carbon, you're negative. I'm positive, let's hook up. Okay, same with this OH right here. This OH says, well, I'm negative as a whole. You know, most of the negativity is this you know, greedy oxygen over here. 
Is there a positive thing that I can be attracted to? Well, yeah, why well, yes, of course there is. It's right there. As a result, you have this as your final product. This is called mechanism. Every reaction has a particular mechanism. Okay. Uh, we haven't done any of these things because I figured that this reaction is the best and most understandable way to illustrate what's really going on inside a reaction vessel. So we're going to look at a few examples. Uh, it's not as easy as you think though. So let's move on to this example. This is a true example. I have right here Ooh, this is a big mistake. Here you go. Okay, one propene. A propene. It doesn't matter. You don't need to say one. And you're reacting this with water. H2O. What are you going to get? Well, let's take a look at the mechanism here again. Okay, the mechanism here. Let's erase this. Let's maybe put it down here is that this double bond one of the double bond is going to break and the electron will go either on this side or go on this side okay now does it matter this time because earlier for this one it didn't matter if it goes here or there because this thing is symmetrical but in this case this thing is not symmetrical so it does matter if it goes here or here because it will give you different things Let's say, let's use a different color. For this example, the two electrons decided to move its way left, causing the middle carbon to be slightly, to be uh, positive, to be negative. Okay. And for this guy, the electron decided to move right. So the right carbon is negative. Okay. Now we all know what the fate is with water. Okay. With water, let's be consistent with the color. Okay. You have H plus and OH minus. Okay because water breaks apart, just like what we saw here. Okay, it breaks apart. Uh, in this case, there's, you know, H will never be negative, O will never be positive, because O is way more electronegative. So it's always gonna be OH minus and H plus. So electrons really don't have choices to, in terms of where to go. It goes to the atom that is more greedy for electrons. So in this case, we see that H will be attached here, OH will be attached here. So let's write this down. You will get this. So beautiful. Not really. It's actually not beautiful. It's actually, you know, it's actually the thing. Yeah, whatever. All right, here, here, here's another one, okay? OH negative and H positive, okay? You can see that this carbon is gonna wanna attract this and this carbon wanna attract this. As a result, this scenario will give you this. There you go, okay? I hope you can see that this and this are isomer. They have different name. Okay. Uh, in fact, this is an alcohol. 
Okay, it's a primary alcohol. This is a secondary alcohol. Let's, let's give it a name. This is isopropanol or 2-propanol. This one is 1-propanol. Okay. I should think I sh should go back up here and and write down the general reaction here. You get an alcohol. Okay, that's what alkene and water do. Okay, you react alkene with water, you get an alcohol. Well, here they are. Okay, here it is. What do you guys think? Are you guys comfortable with that? But I can sh tell you something right now that you probably won't like. Oh, one more thing. Keep missing stuff here. Catalyst. Catalyst. Okay, this reaction will not happen if it's not under acidic condition, okay? The acidic condition um, is very important. So let's go back here and make sure that you guys know that, okay? For the we're wondering this reaction has to be under acidic condition okay let's go back here right now and things seems to be jumping all over the place you have one propanol you have an isopropanol I can tell you right now only one of them exists now you're probably sweating right now well it's probably time to get some ice cream okay. what do you mean one of them only exists it seems reasonable that when the double bond breaks, this guy can take OH or this guy can take OH and vice versa, right? Leading me with two products. What do you mean? Only one product exists. Well, what I didn't tell you is that there's this little rule called McConaughey rule. I think it's some... Konakov sounds like a, a Russian name. I don't know. Okay. You don't need to know the rule that well. But then, of course, uh, this rule is this. Okay. There's actually two variations of it. The first variation, they said that H. Actually, let's not say H. Let's say the rich. Okay, instead of dollar sign, it is H. Gets richer. Okay, the rich gets richer. So, as a carbon, if you already have a lot of H's with you, you're going to get more H's than the one who's not. Okay. Let's take a look at a scenario right here. Okay, let's take a let's look at this scenario and take a look at this scenario. Okay, H is what we're concentrating on because that's like money. It's just like money, money. Okay. Let's erase this for a second. Let's erase this for a second. Let's not talk about the plus and the minus. Okay. This is quite elementary, and I will tell you the more scientific way later on. All right, so the rich, the rich get richer, right? So which carbon right here is richer? Okay, remember, H means money. So if you look at this C, this C is hooked up to 1H. This C is hooked up to 2Hs. Okay, so rich gets richer this C is more rich so therefore it makes sense that you get this H right right it only makes sense that it picks up this H right here so if this carbon picks up this H, this carbon must pick up this OH. Which means this 
is the ultimate product. This actually doesn't exist for this reaction. It exists. You know, there's some, there's obviously such thing as one propanol, but not from this reaction. You have, if you're going to make one propanol, you're going to have to make it through another type of reaction. Okay. So if you're going to do a uh, hydration of alkene, only this product exists because of Meconikoff rule, because rich gets richer. So when the double bond breaks, this carbon who already has two hydrogen will pick up the hydrogen from. So, so this hydrogen, as I said again, um, will get picked up, okay, by this carbon, and this OH will be picked up by this carbon, um, due to this carbon already having two hydrogen. Let's take a look at the real reason. The rich gets richer is only an analogy. So let's go back. And let's put those charges back. Okay. We said that electrons. Oh, let's Electrons has choices in terms of where to move to. It really doesn't have choices. It's, it really doesn't. Let me show you why it doesn't. Okay, here's the situation earlier. Okay, and we know that this is the product that exists. Okay, isopropanol. So let's take a look at the real reason why, okay? The chemistry reason why. All right, the question is this, which one is more stable? Okay, which one is more stable? The one that is more stable is the one that will probably occur. So is electron moving here more stable or electron moving here more stable? Now. This, this is not something that you've learned before, okay? There's something called steric hindrance in inorganic chemistry, in all, in, in all chemistry, okay? Where electron is not really just hint on these bonds, but it's actually a cloud, a cloud hovering the whole molecule. Okay, it's actually a cloud hovering the whole molecule. So, what that means is this. If this is very, a lot of electrons, bearing a whole bunch of electrons, a whole bunch of electrons, and this guy is already fully negatively charged, this is actually a very unstable situation. So unstable that this guy is saying, whoa, whoa, whoa do you, you, these electrons, these electrons, can you just get away? Leave me alone. But of course, this guy, these guys are not going to say, no, no, we cannot leave you alone. We're hooked up into bonds. We're going to stay here. This guy is very annoyed. So annoyed that he, he doesn't want to exist. Now, let's take a look at this situation. Remember, these electrons are there. These electrons are there. They're hovering around this carbon saying that, oh, look, I'm so negative. I'm so negative. But this guy says, well, I'm very positive. I don't mind you guys being here. You guys can stay here. Feel free. I'm positive. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Again, let's go back to the situation. These CH3s, CH2, they, they have a lot of electrons in them because these bonds all are electron based. That's what bonds are. This carbon is already negative. Having so much negativity around something negative, you're just saying, you know, repel you, repel you. Okay. Very unstable situation. Whereas in this situation, you have electrons, electrons, very negative, very negative, but this guy is actually positive. 
He won't mind. Okay? I, I can exist. Don't make me exist for long. But I can exist. As a result. When OH minus comes. And H plus comes. Okay? They have two places. Does he want to go over here and hook up with this guy? Or does he want to home over here and hook up with this guy? Take your pick. I can tell you right now. This guy won't be there. Because he's so unstable. So these OH and these H really don't have anything to pick. Like I said earlier. It's going to do this. That's why you get this. That's McConaughey rule, and that's the true chemistry behind it. But of course, you can just think of it, you know, the rich gets richer, and that would be good. Okay, because it's, it's true. Okay? You wouldn't explain that to a room full of chemists. Okay, but you would explain, of course, this idea you know, to make things make sense. Anyway, let me give you another question, and then I will call it it for the day. Uh, let's, let's clear the screen right here. So I have... Reacting with water under acidic condition, what am I going to get? Okay, so uh, hopefully you can just shut off this video, pause this video, and figure it out, and then come back when you're done. Okay, now you're back. Um, because of McConaughey rule, where would H go? Will H attack? This carbon or this carbon? Well, the answer is very simple. Rich gets richer. So therefore, this... is the product that you'll only see. The other one will not, will not be formed. Okay, it's too unstable to have a, uh, a carbon cation uh, for the middle carbon. All right. Uh, Hopefully you guys are comfortable with this. So let me just give you one more just to make sure that you guys got a hang of this. Okay, tell that kid to keep calm. All right. Uh, this won't be a hydration question. This will be a hydrohalogenation question. So we have 25 degrees Celsius. That's when this will work. All right. So why don't you guys try this one? Unpause when you're done. Okay. Good. All right. It's not a hydration. Do I still have to follow McConaughey rule? The answer is yes. Unfortunately, McConaughey rule is not just for hydration, but also for uh, hydrohalogenation. Okay, because in this case, just like water, the electron will go to who is more electronegative. So what that means is that this H can only attack one of the C's. Well, it will only go with the C's that has more H's. Rich gets richer. So you get yourself right here a tertiary alcohol. Okay. So whenever you get a hydration or a hydrohalogenation of an alkene, uh, make sure you look carefully. Okay. Because McConaughey rule always applies. Now, for 
You'll notice that you won't see any of this on uh, Cognity. I think Cognity don't expect you to know Makonikov rule, but you need to know Makonikov rule. That's very, very important because it's quite embarrassing to tell people that this reaction exists when in fact it doesn't. All right. All right. So let's call it it for today. So tomorrow uh, we'll be looking at reaction of all kinds. It's really just reaction of alkene, maybe going it twice. You'll see tomorrow. Okay, so have a good day now. Bye.